This is Gary Stearman with a special report for you today, and it is a big one. World Net Daily reported on the 24th of June that there will be an announcement coming out of Rome. The patriarch of the Orthodox Church of Ethiopia says that he will announce to the world Friday, June 26th, 2009, the unveiling of the Ark of the Covenant. Many Christians have speculated as to the existence and whereabouts of the Ark. This is perhaps the world's most prized archaeological artifact with great spiritual consequences for the nation Israel. Now, tradition says that the Ark has been hidden away <clears throat> in a church in the country of Ethiopia for literally uh, thousands of years. And tomorrow, as I am making this special announcement, tomorrow morning, the 26th of June, Pope Benedict XVI is going to stand up with uh, Prince Achille Berhan Makanen Haile Selassie and the Duke Amadeo da Costa. Uh, the Duke is uh, the head of a foundation which will fund the building of a museum in which to house the Ark so that people can come from all over the world to see it. This is truly an amazing announcement. Uh, Israel's reaction, who knows, but it's going to be fascinating to watch. Uh, the, again, the announcement is expected to uh, be made 2 p.m. Italian time uh, from a hotel in Rome, the Hotel Aldrovande, and uh, Prince Achille, Haile Selassie, along with the Duke Amadeo da Costa, Pope Benedict XVI, and the Patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, Abuna uh, Paulobos. <clears throat> now, I'll tell you what, if you are a prophecy watcher, you'll be electrified about now. Reading in Second uh, Chronicles uh, chapter 5, when Solomon's temple was dedicated, uh, Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, into Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. The priests brought in the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord unto his place, to the oracle of the house, and to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. For cherubims spread forth their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof above. And Second Chronicles 5, 9 says this, And they drew out the staves of the ark, but that the ends of the staves were seen from the ark before the oracle, but they were not seen without. And there it is unto this day, as Chronicles was written. When you come to the end of the book of Chronicles, uh, you have the temple being prepared for uh, the ark. Uh, we've, in the days of King Josiah, after all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came to fight against Carchemish by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. And in this battle, uh, King Josiah was mortally wounded, around 609 B.C. And it was about this time that the ark was taken out of the temple for safekeeping. Again, that's recorded right at the end of Second Chronicles. Uh, the ark uh, was built to specifications given by God to Moses. It housed Aaron's rod that budded. It housed the pot of manna. It housed the uh, twin uh, tablets of the law. And it was always carried in advance of the people to bring victory to Israel. And if there is a symbol of victory in Israel, it would be the Ark of the Covenant. This is why tomorrow's announcement, that is uh, the announcement to be made on the 26th of June, in the year 2009, may be of vast and important consequence. The ark was taken for safekeeping down along the Nile to the island of Elephantine, where purportedly it rested in a, an expatriate temple uh, for a number of years, and then it was taken uh, reportedly down to Ethiopia. Many authorities have said that it came to the city of Aksum, and uh, the uh, Archbishop, uh, that is to say, the Patriarch of the Orthodox Church of Ethiopia, Abuna 
uh, Paulos says it's still there today. Apparently, they've manufactured a number of arcs so that nobody can tell which is the real one. But he knows. He says he's seen it. And the announcement to be made in Rome about the Ark of the Covenant is something we're going to be watching closely here at Prophecy in the News. Stay tuned for more on this one. I'm sure there will be more. And now, here's J.R. Church with a study on the third epistle of John. I'm J.R. Church. Welcome again to our study in the seven small books between Hebrews and Revelation. We are now in third John for today's broadcast. We're going to look at the sixth year of the tribulation period. Now, John has been writing, introducing the Antichrist in the middle of the tribulation period with 1 John, and all of the Antichrist's false prophets that have been preaching this new religion, demanding a mark in the hand of the forehead, as the book of Revelation tells us, causing men to worship the Antichrist and his one world government. He addresses the elect sister or the elect lady in uh, Second John, which I think represents the uh, people of Israel who have received Christ as their Messiah, having rejected the Antichrist and his uh, statue of Zeus, I think, that he puts up on the temple uh, site. And by the way, there have been twice in history when the statue of Zeus has been placed there. Once around 168 B.C. when Antiochus IV Epiphanes, uh, who is a prototype of the Antichrist, committed the abomination of desolation by putting a statue of Zeus.